So guys, it's the Outlaw and the Sand Magician here today, bringing you our next instalment for our Pocket Sand Instructional. So, my partner is lying on his back and I've used my Pocket Sand trickery to get into this position. Now, I'm going to have two options from this position. Our first option is I'm going to stay low, shoulders behind my partner's hips, so he can't bridge me off my partner. I call this the Matt Serra drunk guy mount position. From here I'm going to reach into my cargo pants, nice and deep. So my partner's bucking and bridging, I'm riding him like a bull, and I'm going to pull out my pocket sand. From here I'm going to bring this pocket sand over, and <laughs> sprinkle it nicely into his eyes. As he covers up, I'm going to start dropping serious elbows into his face. Okay, so that's the first one we're going to do again. I reach with my shoulders behind my hip line. The last thing I want to do is be reaching and I face plant as I'm trying to subdue a very violent attacker. So hips back, I reach into my cargo pants and I sprinkle it into my partner's eyes. First one. Um, again, consult your state or territory in terms of legality for these self-defense practices. Again, what I find is I like to yell stop resisting when I'm doing a lot of damage to my partner when he's on his back. That way, passers-by think that I'm actually I'm, I'm being you know threatened. Um, you got to understand, Jono is in quite a dangerous position here for me. He can punch me, he can strike me any time, and I, I, I do not want that. I'd rather have a, a dead attacker than an attacker that hit me in the face. Okay, all right. So, secondly, with our Ezekiel choke position in Jiu Jitsu, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach back now and get my sand, sand out of my pocket. Now, this, in this situation, is extremely good at covering and blocking airways. So with the sand in my hand now, I'm gonna roll this in front of my partner's mouth and nose, and I'm gonna start jamming it all the way up in there. Okay, I'm gonna wait three or four or five, six seconds when he starts to inhale it by panicking, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> He'll go okay, and that is how we render an attacker unconscious um, by using our pocket sand to, to block and smother airways. I like to call my modification on this technique the Bill Cosby. So, um, when I'm in this position, I'm going to pull the sand out of my pocket and I'm going to spit in, in the sand. Um, that changes the composure of the sand to make it more cement and more dense, so it's easier for me to clump together to, to block airways and get in people's eyes. So with my wet sand now, my damp sand, I'm going to smother that into my partner's orifices, his nose and his mouth and his face from here. Okay. What you're going to find now is his eyes are going to go very red and he won't be able to use them and see them. So his ability to defend himself will be diminished greatly. As well, if I get this wet sand covering his mouth and his nose, his ability to breathe whew, drops off immensely. Um, what that does mean, as I've made the technique more lethal and effective, it is your, on you and you're accountable for his safety after you've uh, dismantled him. So I always like to carry a biro uh, with, an, with, with no um, pen in there in case I've got to do tracheotomies on my partner after he's unconscious. Again, getting sand out your partner's airways is a very, very difficult thing to do, and I'd leave that to healthcare professionals. Okay, but I, I do care about him as, as another human being, and I obviously, you know, he made a mistake trying to come across me and fight me, uh, maybe he owes me money or whatever, but I, I don't want him to pay for that with his life, uh, per se. Um, so, so that's some really advanced uh, sand mount techniques that, that, that we like to practice here at the Grapple Factory, safely of course. So